Hello once again, friends. Pastor Pete here, and it's so great to see you once again and spend a little time. Um, great to have some coffee time together. I've been enjoying that quite a bit with friends here in Dundee, Oregon lately, and uh, some great conversations, great questions coming out of it. I hope you're finding the same experiences there too. So grab your coffee, get your Bible open, Psalm 119, and specifically verse 30, but all of the 119, which is a long, long psalm. We won't read the whole thing. I want to look at verse 30, 119.30. The basic theme of Psalm 119, if you can really boil it down to one thing, the basic theme is the practical use of God's word in the life of a believer. So those of us who believe in God, who believe in Christ for our salvation, and therefore our faith is in God, how the his word is such a valuable and practical, useful, it, it guides our lives, right? That's the basic theme. And, but yet the description of it, when you're reading through it, you can get tongue twisted and turned around in all kinds of directions. And you especially can get drawn down into all these struggles that are described, how, how life has not always gone well, that there's been so many difficulties of life. Some of those, many of those perhaps, self-inflicted, following some poor choices, and many more from the persecution that has come because of others uh, not, because I have a faith in God, I have received persecution. That's what the psalmist is writing. So there's both of these things, and so, but yet he's calling out to God for your word. He's calling out to be guided in the right ways. And, and so in, in, a, in a nutshell, Psalm 119 is that the word of God is sufficient to make us wise and to train us in righteousness and to equip us for the good work that he's got planned for us to do. That's what Psalm 119 is. But to, I want to take a look at verse 30 in particular. And what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to let the word just, just kind of teach us both today. I'm going to read it in five or six different translations and just kind of point out some of the nuances of translation that how rich this concept is that's, that's contained here and how the different translators almost kind of wrestled with how do we say this right. They should have used more words, maybe combined all this together. The ESV, which is a very common uh, translation, and I use it quite a bit to teach from right now, um, it says, I have chosen, Psalm 11930, I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. And you're going to hear this, I have chosen over and over again. The NIV says, I have chosen the way of faithfulness. Same phrase. And then he says, I have set my heart on your laws. I have determined in my heart that it's going to go according to your laws. The NASB, also a favorite of mine. I have chosen the faithful way. I have placed your judgments before me. So he's talking about not just the rules and not just the laws, but the judgments, understanding that, that, there's, that there's not just a guideline, but there's actually, this is firm. When there's a judgment, that means that these laws, these rules have a firmness to them that when followed a certain consequence and when not followed a different one. I have placed your judgments. The CSB, the Christian Standard Bible says, I have chosen the way of truth. And I have set your ordinances before me. Ordinances just being a different way to say that. But the way of truth. I have not just the faithful way, but I have chosen the way of truth, knowing that this is true and faithful meaning it's never going to not be true. It's always going to be the right way. The NLT, the New Living Translation, a real modern uh, rendering of it, if you will, says, I have chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your regulations. I like the richness of that. It's not so much a matter of just what I'm doing, but how who I am being, how I am being, how my life is being lived out. And I have determined, this is, I have chosen and I have determined, this is the constant theme here. Now, finally, I want to give you one more translation. I've really been enjoying this one a lot lately. Uh, it boils it right down to very simple phrases. It's, it's, um, it's, I think it's from the BibleGateway.com or .org. You should look it up. It's the easy translation. And it's, it's written in really super simple language. It says this, 
I have chosen to live in the right way. I will continue to obey your rules. So it's, it, it puts it in both a, a moment came in my life when I recognized there's a way to go that is in alignment with your word and the way to go that's not. And I see all the times I have not and all the times I've been tempted not to because it would be so much easier. But I've chosen to live the right way, which is, and I will continue to obey your rules. So you know what this really comes down to is the word of God is useful, but it's only useful when our will, our choice, is in alignment with God. It's why Jesus taught his disciples to begin their prayer with our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And that's my prayer for you today, that you will stop and take a look at your life and recognize where is it going well and where is it not. And, and the reasons why it's not is because perhaps you have not chosen to follow the faithful, truth-filled way. And you have not determined to continue in that way day to day. I pray that you will find freedom in that and that you'll be able to apply this to your lives today. Thanks for visiting, friends. Until next time, God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.